So this video, I wanted to cover modifiers. Okay, so what is a modifier? So a modifier is thing that controls and restricts the visibility or behavior of classes methods, constructors, and attributes. So that's a modifier. A modifier controls and restricts the visibility, access, or behavior of a class method, constructor, or attribute. So, there are two types. Modifiers can be split into two. The first type of modifier is the access modifier. The access modifier will control the visibility or access of a method, class, attribute, or constructor. On the other hand, the non-access modifier will control the behavior. So, those are really how you can split them up. And in our definition, I'm going to write two types. Access and non-access. I should have wrote those in different colors, but you kind of get the gist. We have our two types. Oops. We have our access. And we have our non-access. So those are our two types. So just know that the, the definition of that is the definition of that. Just controls and restricts the visibility or access of a class method constructor or attribute. And non-access modifier is the behavior. So I don't have to rewrite the definitions for those. Save me some space. So there are four access modifiers. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm doing everything in access, all the access modifiers in red, and I'm doing all the non-access modifiers in blue. So that's why I kind of color coordinated them. So that way you can see that I'm using access modifiers for the color red and non-access modifiers for the color blue. So let's start. Our first access modifier is public. Public has the widest scope, the widest visibility, or the widest access. And what public really is, is method, class, attribute, or constructor is accessible or visible within all packages. Just know that a package is a group of related classes, subclasses, or interfaces. So that's public. Method class attribute or constructor is accessible within all packages. So if I made a public, and I made it an integer, I made it x and I made it equal to seven. And now let's say this class is 
call f, right? Right? So, and close that. So, that's one class. And let's say I call a package, I declare this in the package L, right? So then I have another package and I have a package M, for example. And I make a class. G, right? And then what I want to do is I want to have my main method. Once again, this is pseudocode. And then what I want to do is I want to print X. And even though they're in two different files or they're, they're in two different packages and they're also in two different files or two different classes, really, this is still going to print seven. The reason why is that our X is still visible. That means it can still see that we have defined an integer X named seven. And that's why it kind of comes in handy. So that's how public really works. It's accessible, it's visible in all packages. So if I were to declare a public integer and I printed it, it would still access that integer because it's public. So that's how public works. Next, we have default. You've probably seen default a lot. You've definitely seen it in the beginning stages of Java. When you do an int x equals 7, you're specifying the default modifier. Default modifier just means you don't put anything in front of it. And what the default modifier is, is it's public. It's the same thing as public, but a catch. So let me reiterate what I wrote. Default, the method class attribute or constructor is visible within only the package declaring. So if I had a package L, assume there's a class here by the way, and I made it in x equals seven, and then when I go to a package M and I print the seven, or I print x, my bad, and I print that X, that's not going to work. And the reason why that's not going to work is because our modifier is wrong. It's not visible. The, pa the package M will not be able to see what's defined in package L. If we made it public, it would work, but otherwise, it wouldn't. So that's kind of how the default works. Method class attribute or constructor is visible only within the package that's declaring it. So, I'm gonna have to kneel down now. Next, we have private. Oh, whoops. Okay, so, private. 
method attribute constructor is visible within only the class declaring it. So if I made a class, called it f, and I made a private integer, made it equal to 7, right? So if I had another class, let's make this our main class. And then you print this. This will generate an error. And the reason why is because this ain't visible. It's not visible. Because according to our private definition, method attribute constructor is visible within only the class declaring it. And because of that, we cannot print this. If we change this to a public or a default, it would work. But since we made it private, it wouldn't. And that's why that would generate an error. Because according to our definition, method attribute constructor is visible within only a class declaring it. So if we have a different class that prints it, that'll work. Also assume that I put the main class there. I'm just, I'm not really, willing to write down the entire Java code on the whiteboard. So, yeah. So that's private. Lastly, we have one more modifier to cover. So, protect it. Reiterate what I wrote. Method attribute constructor is visible within the package or subclasses declaring it. Once again, I have not talked about inheritance, so you probably don't know what that is. But subclasses are basically when, when they inherit other classes, they extend other classes, and they do things like that. They benefit. So, what I did is I have a class. I call it f. Make that public, right? And then I have a class G that extends F. You don't need to know this right now. Just know that this is a subclass for now. All right? So if I were to make a protected in F, make it equal to seven, Right? And then what I did is I have my main. And then I print x. This would work. This would print 7. Because according to our definition, it works. It's visible within the subclass because we defined it as protected. So that's kind of how protected works. Another key thing I want to note down before going to our non-access modifiers Another topic, key thing I want to point out is with classes. So hopefully it kind of makes sense after reading those definitions why you can't use certain modifiers on certain classes. Because in private, the method attribute or constructor is visible within only the class that's declaring it. You can't make a class private, it just doesn't make sense according to our definition. So with these two, classes cannot use. That's a key thing to know. Classes cannot use these two, but they can use public and default. The other three can use them all. And then another point I want to write down before we move on,
Constructors could not use non-access modifiers. So non-access modifiers are really just limited to classes, attributes, and methods. Okay, so we're moving on. Non-access modifiers. There are actually six of them, but since I'm running out of space, I'm only going to cover the three main things that are the most important. And one of them, you already know what they are. Static. And static just means method, class, no, not the class, apologies. Just note, method, attribute, belongs to a class rather than an instance of that class. This right here is just a fancy word for an object. Instance, instance methods use objects, static methods Use, use their own respective classes. So you probably already know what that is if you've seen the static versus non-static video. It just means the method attribute belongs to a class rather than an instance of a class. Which this is just a fancy way of saying an object. Okay, our second non-access modifier is final. And final is kind of specific to whatever you're declaring final. There are three things that you can declare final. Method, class and attribute. Constructors, like I said, cannot be final, like according to here, constructors cannot use non-access modifiers. So final really just depends on what you're making final. So if you're making a method final, that means you'll learn about this more in abstraction when we learn about overriding methods. So um, don't worry about that, but when you declare a method final, it can't be overridden. If a class is declared final, it cannot be inherited. And then finally, Attribute must stay fixed if it's declared final. This is this just means that if you make a final integer and you call it five or make it x equal to five, if you multiply that by two, you're gonna get an error. So the best way to use final with attributes is for consonants like pi, e, stuff like that. Because they cannot change their value. So that's kind of when you would want to declare final for an attribute. So attribute must stay fixed. If an attribute is declared final, it cannot its value cannot change. So whatever you declare it is, it stays that. And then with the other two, method cannot be overridden, class cannot be inherited. So really final just depends on what you're making final. Each of their three things have their own differences depending on what you're making final. So if you're making a method final, you can't override it. If you're making a class final, you can't inherit it. And if you're making an attribute final, it must stay fixed. You cannot change its value. And then finally, the last one, which I kind of seem the most wordy is abstract. Abstract is our final non-access modifier. There's like stuff like synchronize and stuff like that. I'm running out of space and I don't want to cover them into them. They're too more complex. I might come back to those stuff when we go over collections because the vectors and stuff use it. So yeah, abstract. So class cannot create objects. A class declared abstract cannot create objects.
Okay, so abstract is, so classes, if they're declared abstract, can't create objects. Methods declared abstract must be within an abstract class. You can't declare an abstract method if it's just a public class. Abstract methods must be within abstract classes. And abstract classes, once again, they cannot create objects. So if you create an object within an abstract class, you're going to get an error. So methods declared abstract must be within an abstract class, once again. Abstract methods have no body, so that means like you can't like put anything in the body. Wherever you have like the curly braces and stuff, you can't put anything in there. You just end it with a semicolon. Whenever you have an abstract method, so, and then after that, you can use abstract methods and classes in respective subclasses. So when you extend and that you can extend an abstract class and you can override the method from there or you, yeah. You can just override the method, you can create your objects in that subclass. So that's kind of how you can use your abstract methods and classes in respective subclasses. So that kind of sums up modifiers. You got two types, access and non-access. Access modifiers control the visibility or the access, while non-access modifiers control the behavior of classes, methods, constructors, or attributes. Once again, classes can use public and default for the access modifier. Classes cannot use static, private, or protected. And it kind of has common sense why, if you read the definition, you probably know why you can't use private for those. Classes can use final, abstract, public, and default. And that is just because of their definition, kind of common sense, if you think about it, you can know why. And that's it, that's modifiers. So now we're gonna see how modifiers work in code rather than a hands-on demonstration. So let's recap with what we learned. We learned that modifiers control the visibility or behavior of a method, class, attribute, or constructor. We know that there's two types, the access modifiers that control the visibility or the non-access modifiers that control the behavior. Constructors cannot use non-access modifiers, but can use the access modifiers. So first we're gonna talk about the access modifiers. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go over the first part. The first part is public. Public has the widest visibility among all of them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a public, I'm going to make it a string array. So I'm going to make that static final string array. And I'm going to make it Ross kids. I'm going to make it equal to Emma, Luke, Ravi, Zuri. There we go. We have created a string array of the Ross kids. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make a method that loops through them. So I'm going to make a method. I'm going to call it Jesse. And it's going to take in the string array of Ross kids. And then what I want to do is I'm going to loop through them. There we go. That is done. By the way, this is an enhanced for loop or a for each loop. I call it enhanced for loop. I've not talked about it, but it's just another way to do this. It's just another way to do your regular for loop. That's the same thing. There we go. So this is just the same as that, just to keep that, keep that in my mind. And this is just the regular for loop. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go to our second file, which is our v2 of our modifiers demo. So what are we going to do here? Well, first we need a main method. And then after that, what we can do is we can create an object of our previous class. And what this is going to do is that it's going to kind of like store all the information, I guess you can call it. It'll make more sense when I introduce objects, but it's going to 
taken all this information and put it into this class. So we're going to create an object of that class. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a call to the method. Just like that. Should be active. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Since I declared it static, I have to refer it to the class. My bad. There we go. That's why. I forgot I made the static. Always remember whenever you're making something static and whenever you're making something instance. Instance is just another word for non-static. Um, they can both be used interchangeably. So this right here is an instance method. You're also going to hear it called a static method. Both of them mean the same thing. In my static versus non-static video, I called it a non-static method a lot. You're, you're going to hear me later call it an instance method. Same as non-static. They're synonyms. Okay. So we have our instance method. We made a call to our instance method through an object. We recall that an instance method refer an instance method belongs to an object rather than the class. So because it belongs to an object, we created that object and we used the dot operator to call the method. And then we passed in the parameter of Ross kids. So now let's print that. What does that do? Well, that's just going to print Emma, Ravi, Emma, Luke, Ravi, and Zuri. So what happened here? So first of all, what happened was we made this public. We made our string array public. And the reason why we made it public was so that this package will be able to make it, it will be visible to this package. If we didn't make this public, this package wouldn't be able to see that we created a string array of the Ross kids. And therefore it would not be able to print it. It would result in an error saying that this and this is not visible. So that's why we made that public. We also made our method public because when we made a method call to our Jesse method, it had to be visible. You can only make a call to it if the if the computer can see it. The computer cannot see, cannot see. so like if I made this, if I didn't make the method public, it's not going to be visible. Therefore, I cannot make a call to it, which is why it's great to make it public. So like I said, public is probably the best access modifier out there just because it is very wide like its access is very wide its scope is very wide its visibility is just very wide and that's kind of how a demonstration of how the public modifier works so now the next thing i'm going to talk about is i'm going to talk about the default modifier the default modifier is when you don't specify a modifier before a method attribute constructor or class so right here what i've done in my method is that this is a default method which means that it doesn't have an access modifier to it. So what this means is that whatever the package it's declared, whatever it's declared in, only that package it's visible to. So because we declared this void method in the pies package, only it's only visible to the pies package. So that means that if we open this, by the way, this is in another package. It's called the L package. Don't ask me why. I have horrible naming skills. So but what we did is that we we made we made a file in a new package a java file and when we make a call to it it won't be able to make a call to it because it's not visible it cannot see this method and that's because it's using the default modifier so hopefully that kind of made sense on how it works so um we can fix this by copying this and we can just paste all this over here and that can run. Before, you saw that our Jesse method wasn't visible, and that was because of our default modifier. The default modifier means it's only visible in that package that it's defined in. Since it was defined in the pies package, it was only visible in the pies package. But since we moved our main method and we moved our method call to the Jesse method in our pies package, it was visible. It was able to see the method and therefore it worked. So that's kind of a little bit of a demonstration with how the default works. I'm gonna move this back. There we go. You're gonna get an error there just because of what we talked about. So the next access modifier we're gonna talk about is private. Private means the method attribute constructor 
is visible only in the class it's declared in. So this is kind of the same thing as default. However, it's not just it's not visible in the package it's declared in. Instead, it's visible in only the class it's declared in. So let's say right here I made a private method. Let's say I made that method private. What that's going to do is that this is going to give you an error. And it's going to give you the same error as the default modifier did. And it's going to say it isn't visible. And it's not visible because the method call isn't in the same class. If we move the method call to the same class, then it would be visible and it would be able to make a call to it. So I should just copy that and then I can remove this. There we go. And then now that will be able to work. Because now since we made it private, it's in the same class as well as the same package, but more importantly, it's in the same class and therefore it was able to work. Okay, so that's kind of how private works. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is our final access modifier, which is protected. And protected basically means the method attribute or constructor cannot, I mean, it is visible in only the package and subclass, it's subclasses it's declared. Sorry about that. So protected, only visible in package and subclasses. I hope this kind of makes sense why you can't use protected in a class or you can't use private in a class. So yeah. No. So, what do we have here? So what we can do extends modifiers demo. We're gonna make these protected. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this. And then we're gonna make an object out of this class instead of our previous class. So what did this do? What we did is we created an object of the subclass. And since we made it protected, According to our definition, the method attribute or constructor is only visible in the packages or subclasses it's declared in. So since this, since this is protected, it's visible in not only the Pi's package, but it's also available in the subclasses that extend our original class, if that makes sense. So this is our subclass. It's visible because it's protected. Hopefully that kind of made some sense on how that worked. We can go ahead and run it. And that's gonna print Emma, Luke, Robbie, and Zuri. So that's kind of how protected works. So hopefully that kind of made sense on how the access modifiers worked. If that didn't make sense, be sure to ask questions in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Just don't be hesitant to ask any questions. Okay, so now we're done with our access modifiers. Let's now move on to our non-access modifiers. What if we decided to make this method static? Well, according to our static definition, the method or attribute belongs to a class that is declared in rather than the object. So this means that we have to make a method call to our class since it belongs to the class. And that's kind of the main difference between static and instance. Instance is just another word for non-static. And we don't have to create an object because it's static. And now you can see that works, but I'm going to keep whatever we had earlier because we're going to need it again. Here we go. Okay. So what I can do is the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the keyword final. Final is just another non-access modifier. And what final means is that if a method is final, it can't be overridden. Um, attributes declare final, can't change the value, and classes declared final cannot extend other classes. So if I made this class final, you would get a huge error. And that error is, is this. Cannot, the type modifiers demo v2 cannot subclass the final class modifier demo. And that's because of what the final, final modifier does. The final modifier prevents the classes from extending other classes. By the way, 
This is called inheritance. It's a key fundamental of object-oriented programming. I've not talked about it, but I will talk about it shortly later on in the Java playlist, probably somewhat after object-oriented programming. So you might not understand what extends and everything means. Just know that this is a subclass. So I'm going to put that down. This is just a subclass. Okay. So that's kind of how final works for the classes. If we made that class final, it cannot extend other classes. So I'm going to come back here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, I'm going to make an integer. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make a final and I'm going to make it equal to five. What if I decided to multiply it by two? What is that going to do? Well, you're going to get an error. And that's because the final local variable x cannot be assigned. And the reason why it can't be assigned is because of our final. It can't change. This is a constant value, which is why if you're doing something like math.py, it's best to declare that as final because math.py, the value of it cannot change. So that's why it's great to make that final. You just do that. Okay, so that's kind of how final works. And our last non-access modifier that I'm gonna be talking about is abstract. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this entire method. I'm gonna remove the body. According to our definition of the access mod modifier abstract, it means that classes declared abstract cannot create objects and methods that are declared abstract by the way, you can't use static with abstract, but let's let's kind of go back to our definition here. Abstract classes declared classes declared abstracts cannot create objects. So, like, remember what we did here? We created an object. If we made this class abstract, we would not be able to declare an object out of it, and this would error out. So, the next thing with abstract is a method that's declared abstract must be present within an abstract class. Since this class is abstract, we can make our method abstract. However, if I decided to make a class, but I didn't make, but I made the method abstract, then you're going to get an error because the class has to be abstract in order to use an abstract method. And then finally, another key thing with abstract is that its methods have no body. So that means you just put a semicolon at the end. That's how you kind of define abstract classes. I'm going to talk about this more in abstraction. Abstraction is just, just hides unnecessary details from the user. But I'm going to talk about more about the abstract modifier in abstraction. So that's kind of how the abstract modifier works. And then what I can do is I can go to the subclass, which leads me to my final point. Abstract methods and classes can only be used in a respective subclass. So what we have here is I've made a subclass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our method protected void jesse. It's going to take in the string array of Ross kids, right? Just like what we said. And then we're going to do that. And then finally, we can fill in our body. That should be a string. And then what we can do is we can finally print. Oh, whoops, wrong method. And then we can do plus that. And since these aren't static, we can't use them anymore. Do that what's this error it's not visible so we have to go change it let's make this public there we go oh it's because of the class my bad let's make this public there we go and let's change this back to protected okay there we go so what did we do? 
So what we did is we made an abstract class. Keep in mind that you can't define an abstract method without having to find an abstract class. So first we define an abstract class. We made it public, which means it's visible in a different package rather than the package we defined it in. And then what we did is we made our abstract method. We made a protected method that's abstract, that is void, will not return a value. And you call it Jesse, that'll take in a string of Ross kids. By the way, this is an abstract method. I should be, I should be able to update my comments. Sorry about that. That's a protected method. It's abstract. Keep in mind, you can't use abstract and static in the same method declaration. So the signature cannot have static and abstract. It can only have either one. So according to our definition, again, abstract methods can't have a body. So that's why we don't have a body. We define the body later in a respective subclass. So here we have defined our body. And yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and run this. And then that's how it works. We made Emma, Luke, Robbie, and Zuri. Okay, so that pretty much sums up modifiers. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. This does kind of take some practice. I highly recommend try this out in your IDE. If you try it out yourself in your IDE, you'll be able to understand it better. So um, I know this was kind of confusing at some points, but if you did have any questions that happened throughout this video, be sure to let me know in the comments. Um, don't be hesitant to ask because I know that sometimes things can get confusing while programming and I'll be happy to answer it. So yeah, that's it. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time.